Let us now take the second example and even this one here is a previously asked SSC CGL exam question. Now it goes as follows. If a squared plus b squared plus c squared equals to 2 times of a minus b minus c minus 3 then find the value of 2a minus 3b plus 4c. And the options here are 3, 1, 2 and 4. Well, this really is a typical one. I mean, if you look at the given expression or equation here, a squared plus b squared plus c squared equals to 2 times of a minus b minus c minus 3. That doesn't really correlate with any of those identities that we have looked at, right? And also, the required value is not a very uh, general one, right? It is like 2a minus 3b plus 4c. So, you know, doesn't look like it will match with any of the identities that we have seen earlier. So let's try and see if we can get the solution of A, B, C directly by using some logic or we'll have to go with some other method of answering this question. Now if you look at the left hand side of the given equation, it is A squared plus B squared plus C squared, which definitely is going to be a positive value. Since each one of the number uh, variable here is squared, we get a positive term, right? A square can never be negative. So this is going to be a positive number, which means if you look at the right hand side now, we have got two terms. The first term here is 2 times of a minus b minus c and the second term is 3. Right? In between we have got a negative sign. So if the left hand side is positive, it, it is obvious that the right hand side should also be a positive number. Right? In fact, it has to be equal to what we have on the left hand side. But then we can at least go ahead and say that the first term that is 2 times of a minus b minus c should be greater than 3. Right? It has to be greater than 3. 2 times of a minus b minus c has to be greater than 3. Only then this can become positive. And that's just one way of trying to get some idea about a, b and c. Right? I don't say that this is the right solution or this is how you should proceed. But you know when you are trying with some random numbers there, you just can't substitute anything you want. Right? Like in the earlier case we have seen that uh, you know x squared plus y squared plus z squared was equal to 20 and x plus y plus z was equal to 4. So there we know that any value there cannot be more than 4 because the moment it goes beyond 4 what happens we get x square as 25 and y square and z square has to be positive. So the sum of these three cannot be 20. So that we just try to establish on what can be the range of the given number. So going by that logic what do we get 2 times of a minus b minus c has to be greater than 3 or you know a minus b minus c has to be greater than 3 by 2 right but then even this is not really comfortable right what values should we substitute there and and it has to balance with a squared plus b squared plus c squared whatever we go get on the right hand side so i think going by substitution is not really uh, the method here right and if you take some trivial solutions like a, b, c equal to 0, even that doesn't satisfy. If a, b and c all are 0, left hand side is 0. But what about the right hand side? This term becomes 0, but we have minus 3. So 0 doesn't help. If you try with 1, let's say, this is going to be 3, 1 plus 1 plus 1, 3. But this will be negative, right? 1 minus 1 is 0, 2 into minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 5. If you try with 2, 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 12. But here again we get a negative number. So clearly, you know, going by trivial solutions or some logic like this is not helpful. So we we'll have to use the given equation and try to, you know, get a proper form in which we will be able to find out what A, B and C are. So let's go ahead and try that. Now again you may ask me that who is going to do all this analysis in the exam. Well, when I explain it takes uh, some amount of time but if you are good at calculations if you are good at numbers there you can quickly think of two three different random solutions and establish if you can at least get the answer or not right if this is the right way to go ahead or not if you don't feel comfortable then just try to do some other solution or just skip and move to the next one right so let's look at the given equation and see how does that help us in finding out the correct answer so we have a squared plus b squared plus c squared equals to 2 times of a minus 2 times b minus 2 times c minus 3 right so what do we do let's let's take everything on the left hand side a squared plus b squared plus c squared minus 2a plus 2b plus 2c and plus 3 right plus 3 plus 3 equals to 0 right now if you really look at the given terms, we have a squared minus 2a, b squared plus 2b, c squared plus 2c and we have one constant 3. 
Now maybe if we have a squared minus 2a plus 1, it can be taken as a minus 1 the whole square. Likewise, we already have b squared plus 2b. But if you have one constant 1, we can say b squared plus 2b plus 1. These three terms together can be expressed as b plus 1 the whole square. Right? And we have c squared plus 2c. So if you have 1, we can say c squared plus 2c plus 1 equals to c plus 1 whole square. So all we need to do now here is split the number 3 into 3 parts. What is that? 1 plus 1 plus 1. So that we can use you know each one here in three different cases. So what do we get? a squared minus 2a. I am taking plus 1. Plus b squared plus 2b plus 1. Right? And finally c squared plus 2c plus 1 equals to 0. Now let's write in the simpler form. a squared minus 2a plus 1 can be taken as a minus 1 whole squared. Plus this can be taken as b plus 1 whole squared. Right? Plus the last part here can be expressed as c plus 1 the whole squared equals to 0. Now, sum of three terms is equal to 0. The easiest solution will be equate each one of them to 0. Right? Let's assume every term is 0. 0 plus 0 plus 0 will be equal to 0. So if this is 0, what happens? a minus 1 equals to 0 implies a is equal to 1 b plus 1 equals to 0 which implies b equals to minus 1 and c plus 1 equals to 0 implies c equals to minus 1. Again you need not write all these three steps in the exam and waste your time right. You can understand that a should be 1 and b and c have to be minus 1 there. Now that we have got the values substitute in the required equation right 2a minus 3b plus 4c. So this will, this will be equal to 2 into 1 minus 3 into minus 1 plus 4 into minus 1. So this is 2 plus 3 right minus 3 into minus 1 is plus 3. So 2 plus 3 5 5 minus 4 equals to 1. So we can say that the answer for the given question will be equal to 1 which is option B. So for such typical questions I think we'll either have to find out the solution of A, B and C by doing some random substitution or expand or reduce the given equation in such a form to see if we can get the values of a, b and c in some other way. So that we can substitute those three values in the given equation that is 2a minus 3b plus 4c in this case to find out the final answer.